When you start reading Judges 6, what well, I don't even I didn't put it up there, but let me just read you a portion for some of you if you're not familiar with it. This book, I love this book because many of us can identify with Gideon. He was going through a very serious time in his life. And in Judges 6, verses 1, as soon as I get there, um, it says here, the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, you know, the Israelites were messing up too. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And it says, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midian, the Israelites made themselves dens, which are in the mountains, in the caves, in the strongholds. And it says, for whenever Israel has sown their seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came up against them. They would encamp against them and destroy the crops as far as Gaza and leave no nourishment for Israel and no ox or no sheep or donkey. In other words, you take two steps forward and then you go five steps back, all right? And so they had, um, um, he was really struggling with fear. There was just so much going on and he was really discouraged. And so that word Midian, when you look it up, it means bitterness and strife and contending. We cannot, again, and I know you hear this all the time from us, you cannot allow bitterness, unforgiveness, and strife to be in your heart. It will hinder you. They were hidden, because, and then that was an open door for the enemy to harass them. The Amalekites means um, it represented arrogance and pride and spiritual blindness. And so a wise, the Bible says in Proverbs that a wise man or woman has a teachable spirit. When you're not teachable, that's arrogant. That's pride. That's like you know more than Jesus. But that's where you have to have a, an open heart and be teachable. That's really, really important in, uh, in every dimension, whether it's in church, whether it's at home, whether it's in your workplace. You have to be teachable. And so that was something that really, really hindered Gideon. And the Spirit of the Lord came to Gideon, and he called him a mighty man of valor. And Gideon's like, who are you talking to, me? You know, and so, but see, that's what the, the way the Lord sees us is the finished product. He doesn't see us. And, you know, I really believe the enemy sees us as that finished product. He just doesn't want us to know who we are. He doesn't want us to see the, the sword and the power and the might that we operate in. We have that dunamis power, that dynamite power of God that is within us. But think about it. If we all... We're flowing in that. If we all were like, like you know, you're not backing down. We all were like in that place. And like even though in the natural you can get nervous, in the natural you can have your thought processes, but you're not backing down. Imagine what would happen. Imagine, I'm talking about the ecclesia, the churches at large. But you know what? God is raising them up. I'm dreaming a dream when I see this force, this army rise up, of ecclesia people that's taking a stand that's saying, not on my watch, back down. Where the parents stand up and say, you're not having a drag queen come in and go to the library and, and read a story. When we're, the Christian can't go in there, but a drag queen can go in there? Are you kidding me? It's going to take the people to rise up and say, not on my watch. But it also takes us praying. Prayer is what makes the difference. So, <clears throat> so God is raising up warriors. So the next thing, um, okay, so, okay, so look at that. Gideon, his name means one who cuts down trees. It literally, the root of his name literally means destroyer. And the Lord gave the word, and, uh, but Gideon had to take steps of action, and we're called to do the same. The Lord is calling each and every one of us, mighty men and women of valor, and it's like, yeah, well, you don't know what I've gone through. Well, the Lord knows the end from the beginning. And so he wants you to see yourself. I want you to start speaking that over yourself, that you are a mighty man or woman of valor, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you because of the power of God within you. But one of the names, and I love, I, I mean, I love studying the names of God, is El Gibor. And I always call upon El Gibor, that's mighty champion God. You know, he's our mighty God. Gibor is the one, I mean, when, when you study Goliath, you know, it, it was uh, that spirit. I mean, at, literally, in the, like his name also meant Bigor, Gabor, but it was mighty champion that took him out and cut his head off. You see, the enemy is no match for God. 
But, but he's El Gibor. You have to remember, Lord, you are my champion God. You are mighty in power. You have that dunamis power in you, oh God. You have that Kratos power that just is explosive. And then you have Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. I mean, in Romans it says that the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. I'm, peace is a powerful weapon. The enemy wants us to be in anxiety and fear, but when you have that peace, even though, you know, at times you, you're like, I remember saying to my husband, am I in denial? I have such peace right now when, you know, I was battling with a health issue that, I mean, I'm not even worried about it. I'm not concerned. But see, that's where God wants us because when you get the word in you, the word supersedes what you're feeling, right? So that's the other thing. This is our season of birthing the suddenlies we have been contending for. Listen, it's not a time to back up. It's not a time to give up. It's a time that I am not giving up. It's like that bulldog that's on, that has his, you know, that grip on that bone. It's not letting up, and I'm not letting up because God is not allowing that in our lives. He's saying, don't. He goes, I want you to know what you have. I want you to know my spirit in you. I want you to know the breaker that's here to break through situations in your life. He wants you to know it is well. It is well with you. Like that Shunammite woman. I'm going to preach about her. I mean, when I think about that lady, when her son died and, and Gehazi came up to her and said, is there, you know, basically there's something wrong with you? It is well. I'm thinking, would I say it is well? I'd probably say, get out of my way. Oh, my son just died. You know, I mean, did I ask you to pray? Did I ask you for this miracle? My son just died. I mean, I don't know how. I think I would have been a little passionate about it. She just said it is well. It is well. She, Gehazi came to her. She's like, not you. You're not the one who gave me the word. I want the man to come and pray for me. She spoke to, um, you know, uh, Elijah. And he came, and I'm just thinking about the array of emotions that she had to go through. He died. And then, you know, but, but her saying, it is well. I was just focused on her, just saying, it is well. It is well. Her husband's like, where are you going? It's not the new moon. It's not this. It's not that. Where are you going? She's like, no, it's well. Don't worry about it. She didn't even talk to him about it. I, it's just amazing. But see, that's that strength of the Lord. That's that, that calm of God and that knowing who he is, knowing that God brought this. He, he started this thing. He's going to finish it. I'm going back. Elijah, you're coming back to the place where you prayed. You gave me a word. You're coming back where you birthed that thing. The devil's not going to steal that birthing from me. He's not going to steal the gift that God gave me. I'm going to see that thing come back to life, and there's going to be resurrection life. There's going to be the power of God that's going to cause that breakthrough, that's going to cause that dead thing to come to life. It is well. It is well. That dead thing that you've been struggling with, that thing that's saying no, that's not going to happen. You're never going to get healed. You're never going to get married. You're never we're going to get finances. It is well. There is resurrection life. But the Lord is saying, don't give up. Don't try to analyze everything. You can't figure God out. 